What is it like to be a black man in America? Um, to be a black man in America is a very tense thing. Um, it's been something that... Um, we shouldn't even need a hashtag for us to know that black lives matter. But the fact that we actually need it just gets me madder and madder. Like, the real ups to the ups that start with the C. In Baton Rouge after a black man is shot repeatedly by police. Killed. The Black Lives Matter movement was created in 2012 after the killing of Trayvon Martin. The movement is described as a call to action and has grown with the deaths of Alton Sterling, Sandra Bland, Eric Garter, Mike Brown and Philando Castile. What is it like to be a black man in America? Um, to be a black man in America is a very tense thing. Um, it's been something that... Um, I think it's kind of been on my mind a lot lately, especially through creating the recent album that I'm doing. And it, when I say tense, I uh, heard um, Dr. Boyce Watkins, right? He said that like being a black man in America literally means you like get driven crazy, right? And that's like, just being a black person in general in America, it's like, you go, it's so easy to go crazy because there's so many, um, it's not overt racism anymore, right? It's not like somebody's like walking around calling the N-word or any sort of mistreatment like that, but it's just, it's almost like the microaggressions, right? Mm -hmm. You can never work hard enough. And there's no like acknowledgement of just really how far, like how, uh, how difficult, you know, the race is for you. So there's like that whole analogy of where like, you know, white privilege is like literally being able to like get two laps ahead of the race while being a black person, you're two laps behind, but also wearing a chain as you're going behind. So are you support of the movement as Are you support of Black Lives Matter? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, the reason why Barrack exists is because Black Lives Matter. Oh, okay. So before there was a hashtag saying Black Lives Matter, we were already doing what yeah. we're doing, fighting for the rights of black people. Um, do you want to carry on? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Right, so, Barrett was established in 2010, um, and the, per the aim at that stage was to respond to the disproportionate impact of austerity on black workers, service users, and communities. Because we knew the Tory government, which turned out to be a coalition government, mm -hmm. that the cuts that were going to come would be even harsher than before, um, and this is really going to impact on our communities. As we've developed, what we've um, found over the, the past few years is actually racism in all its forms and in all aspects of life and deepened. Yeah? So our campaign is not just focused on austerity and black people, but also the growing racism and all aspects of racism and injustice that black communities face. So you made a video eight months ago yeah. in regards to what was happening in America, mm. but it's still going on now. How do you feel about that? It's like, if I'm totally honest with you, overall it's bad. The only good I can take from it is that what I made a year ago is still relevant now, but it's bad that it's still relevant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's bad that that something I made a year ago is still relevant for, like, for the wrong reasons, mm. you know what I'm trying to say? You know? Um, yeah. Now look at situations with police brutality right now. You know, people literally look right at that video, right, and say, no, that's not happening. No, it's not happening. But it's like, okay, how can you live, like, like you really, you really must want to be distant in your mind with it, or how stupid can you be to look at those videos and say, yeah, they deserve that. Because if that was you in that circumstance, all hell would have broken loose, right? Um, what do you feel are some of the strengths of the movement and some of the weaknesses of the movement? Well, like I said in the song, innit, I don't feel like we should even need to... It's sad that we should feel we need to have that movement in the first place, our Black Lives Matter, you know? But, um, and then, if you want to talk about... Okay, a weakness, what I've seen is that when you, when you get movements like that, people then try and flip it and say, you know, like, all lives matter and it's not the point. It's like, it's like, what's, what's an example I can think of? It's like saying, ah, oh, it's like somebody coming and saying, you know, it's like somebody being very ill, and then someone complains and goes, but we all get ill. 
but you're not the person that's actually ill right now. Mm. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So why why do you want to be like? Is I don't know. Is it attention seeking? Is it? I don't even know what it is, but it's messed up. Yeah. So yeah, that movement. That's I think. You know, it's mad. It's mad. Um, have you got any facts or figures to show how much cuts have been cut from just the black community in particular? Um, so if you look at young black people, yeah. one in two young black people is unemployed. So even though there's a huge number of young people yeah. unemployed, so when you look at 50%, and that, that, you know, probably that figure is even higher, because the official figures don't show the reality. There's a particular impact um, on black, young black people and on black women, and actually our campaign has a focus on those two groups because of that. So to give you an example of um, local authorities who made redundancies, and local authorities, the public sector at wide is one of the biggest employers of black people, and um, yeah, uh, black women who made up around 5% of the workforce made up between 30 to 50% of redundancy, so you can see the, di the disproportionate impact there as well. Yeah. Right. You got a man in Minneapolis, where I'm originally from Minneapolis, I live in New Orleans, but I'm originally from Minneapolis, the man, Philando Castillo, he was on his way home from the grocery store with his uh, fiance and her child. Police stopped him, he had a legal gun, and what you're supposed to do, they say comply, right? They say comply with police officer's request. He told the police officer, I have a, a legal registered gun, which is what you're supposed to do. And this scary guy takes that and murders the man. Shoots a gun five times into a car with a child into it. And you're literally gonna sit there and say to me, you're gonna come up with any reason of why that's justified because he's a black man, right? And that's just, again, it's just one of those things of like, it, it just makes me have to feel stronger in like how I put my words together and how I work to like influence change when I see things like that because you're not gonna you're not gonna sit there and keep saying that this doesn't exist mm. because the, the issue is is like if you keep pretending that this doesn't exist you're gonna create a civil war. With demonstrations taking place all over the globe, the movement is growing quickly. And with the rise of amount of footage being shared that shows the injustice among black people, the movement only strengthens. We were lucky enough to attend one of these protests and speak to some of the people who attended to find out their thoughts on the movement. So what are you doing here today, She Shop? I'm here to show solidarity. Um, I'm an African-American myself and all the things that are happening back in the States is very terrifying. And I feel for my, literally, my sisters and my brothers and my family back home as well as my friends. Okay, um, so... What do you hope the, the achievements be from today? Um, if anything, just to show awareness that we have coming down, then, you know, it's important. It's just the state, so it's just As hundreds gathered, we thought it might be interesting to interview someone who might have a little bit more of an, a different opinion about the protest. Hello, Hi. what's your name? My name's Casey Keneally. Okay, and what do you think of Black Lives Matter? I think it matters. I think that it's important that in this country we can demonstrate and that we can tolerate them really. Um, protesting about what they they feel that they need to protest about. And obviously you're part of the police. Yeah. So how do you feel being that we're potentially protesting against? Um, I like to hope that we can prove that what you're protesting against is that we're not all like that. Mm. That we are the police officers that we do believe everybody's lives matter, including black lives. I'm here specifically because I'm a police officer. Okay. To facilitate yeah. um, these kind of demonstrations. And I think we need to be here, otherwise these demonstrations couldn't happen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what do you think the aim, I mean the goal will be after this protest? 
for this protest? What do you think the goal is? Um, I think awareness is the main thing, isn't it? And I think also that there is more understanding in the police that people are upset and that we take some from that and we learn from it as well. Yeah. I think the police are learning all the time. I think that is definitely something. I mean, we do make mistakes, but I think we are good. And I think in this country particularly, we're good. Yeah. The aim of the protest was still quite unclear, so we decided to catch up with one of the organisers of the event to see what we could find out. Okay, so what are we doing today? We are marching for Black Lives Matter and standing in solidarity with our brothers across the pond. And also, um, a lot of people aren't aware that there is police brutality in this country. They just mask it really well. So we're just bringing awareness about that and showing us a bit because we have been suppressed throughout history. We've been oppressed uh, throughout history and stuff. They've taken a lot of things from us. They've treated us unfairly. So enough is enough. Everyone says that the youth should do something, so that's what we're doing. We're coming out in force. Um, they say youth don't care about politics. We're coming out in force. We're showing that we do. We care about this country. We care about people. We care about our brothers. Yeah, um, and yes, all lives matter, but we're concentrating on the black lives at the moment because apparently black lives don't. So that's what we're doing. Everyone should research their history. Listen, knowledge is power. When they say that, it's not just a statement. It's not just a little statement that people say just to be annoying. Knowledge actually is power and it empowers you as well. Um, since the start of the year, I've been reading up a lot. I've been following Akala. Been reading about um, pan Africanism, all that stuff, and the research in my history. Uh, Africa is actually a very, very strong country. Country? Wow. Africa is a very, very strong continent. Um, you know, the Nigerian history, the Egyptian history, like, even Ethiopian history, Sudan history, they were all powerful nations, and you know, I've, I've noticed that history has become whitewashed and they cut off our history. They only teach us from slavery to Martin Luther King, but that's not where our people come from. And you have to dig deeper and you just have to want to feel the knowledge yourself and empower yourself. So everyone should do that. Research. Knowledge is power. Some of the speakers shared their thoughts, all of which were delivered with drive and passion. And after seeing the names of those who have lost their lives, it was clear that people had had enough. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! And thus they proceeded down the road to Vladimir with their chant and their dedication. And if that's not what you want to do, if you don't want to create a civil war, you need to start acknowledging that some of these things happen. Right, you acknowledge, you acknowledge that this is an epidemic and you need to show your support. Like there's no just like sitting silent about it. You gotta draw your line in the sand. And I just, I just, I, I can't, I can't grow up or even think of raising kids in the world, or raising black kids in the world where that's just gonna ever be okay. I see so many incidents of police brutality where they're like manhandling black women, right? And it's like, for no reason, just because they won't do exactly what you say. Nobody, you are not, you are not the all, you are not, you are not God. You are not given all the power to me, this, you have to, you, if somebody doesn't comply with what you say, you then put your hands on them. And like, I look at that and I, it just brings me so much pain to look at that and see like, well, what if I was with somebody like you, for example, right? And I saw a police officer do that. I'd probably have to die that day, right? Because I'm not going to let them, I'm just not going to be able to sit down and let them manhandle a black woman like that. And for no reason. Because why? They give you a, a smart remark when you pull them over for no reason. That's their right, right? You're baiting people into fights. You're baiting people into, these, into, the, into this aggression. And eventually you're just going to get that back. And what we have to remember is that um, there was already racism in the labour market and in the workplaces. And as a trade union activist, for many years, a good 20 years plus, um, I've been representing members collectively and individually and negotiating policies around the issues that impact on black people in the workplace. Things like um, discrimination in pay, discrimination in uh, progression, and um, you know not just recruitment. So internal policies. 
there's a disproportionate number of harassment and bullying claims that um, black workers raise because of the discrimination that they face in the workplace. And there's a huge discrimination in appraisal. So, you know, the reporting systems that they have in the workplace are biased against black people. They're used in a way to bring bias against black people. So if you take that into context, when black people lose their job because of austerity, it's going to take them far longer to get another job. One, because the jobs are being cut, so there's less jobs there in the sectors that um, are thought to have more progressive uh, equality policies, if you like, which is why um, there, is, there are uh, more people employed in the voluntary sector, the public sector, black people. Um, after the Brixton riots, you had the Skarman report. And the Skarman report, a bit like the McPherson report, um, was supposed to lead to stronger policies in terms of um, uh, equality in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And that, after that point, that black people were mm -hmm. employed more in the public sector. So those jobs gone mean that actually the next generation as well, who may have gone into some of those jobs, those jobs aren't made for them to go to and employers in the private sector are more likely to discriminate. The reason why there's more black workers in the country in the public sector is because of the discrimination that already existed in the private sector, meaning they can't even get a fit in the door in the first place. Have you personally been affected by police brutality? Nine times. Nine? Nine times. Wow. First time when I was thir uh, nine to 13, well, how old was I? I was, uh, it was 1999, it was 1999, um, I think I was like 12 years old, um, and it was me and my friend, we had just gotten um, like the new Hot Boys album came out, Lil Wayne, when he was first, like when he was really young, that album had just come out, and so my mom had taken us to the store and bought it for us and everything like that, we're walking to the park with our headphones in, we're going to literally play some basketball, again, we're 12 years old, and all of a sudden, the people that we went to meet at the uh, park weren't there anymore, so we decided to go back home. All of a sudden, we hear somebody like we hear somebody saying, "You know, get down, get down." We not we're not paying attention because like they can't be talking to us. We hear, "Get the fuck down, get the fuck down," blah 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 blah. We turn around. There's two white police officers, one with a big pump shotgun and one with like a handgun, and they literally like put us on the ground, stuck the gun in our faces. You know, what I mean, Arre like put us in handcuffs, and and they drove us around for 30 minutes. And had these people like see if we were you know, supposedly there were some kids walking around with the gun, and they thought that we fit that um, that we fit the um, the characteristics of those kids, and so they drove us around for 30 minutes and had people identify us, and when they couldn't identify us, they let us go two miles from where we were at, so we ended up having to walk. And they literally still trailed us as we were walking, and that was the first time, and I was at 12 years old, and we weren't like like I'll tell you this much, I've never I haven't t I've never touched a gun. Like, I've never touched a gun. I don't have more than, like, a speeding ticket, right? And it was like, I don't feel, I, I'm tired of having to, like, I'm tired of having to, like, give my stats in order to just determine that I, like, I'm a good person, right? So eventually, if you keep, if you keep not respecting my right as a human, people are not going to care anymore. People are not going to try to leave. People are already trying. We've already adapted to your system. We've already adapted to your white supremacy. And your white supremacy has told us that in order for us even just to make it to the age of 20, 25, if we don't kill each other, then you're going to kill us. Right? So we've all taught us to survive. What do you feel the end result of this movement is going to be, honestly? I don't know if Black Lives Matter specifically what the end result of Black Lives Matter would be. I think that what it's going to do is it's going to spawn, or sorry, it's going to birth. Um, it's going to birth some positive leadership, right? I don't know if Black Lives Matter itself, right, as the entity is going to be it, but I think it's going to birth, I think it's going to birth some awakening and, and some leadership that's going to really bring about I think, the real change that we need. Um, do you feel like we're ever, ever, in this human race, mm. going to be one? Just one? That's a good question. As it stands, not right now. Mm. So you I can't see it? I can't. I mean, I really want to, like, and that's, that's sad. Like, 
I really want to see that. Like, I really want that. That's basically what it's meant to be, isn't it? Yeah, it's mad, like, it's mad. Because it's true, like, why does, why does, like, that one thing seem so far away? Why does, yeah, why does peace seem so far away? It's mad. Yeah. Okay, like, the earrings. Yo, okay. Fuck all, all of the, the feds. feds. No, wait, just the corrupt ones. Who the fuck we have seen on the news lately got me thankful that I live in London. Racism never died. Racism is right here. The devil can't be alive. And what's his voice in my ear? Yo, D, I know you're not know the type to miss death on others, but D, look at what's going on. It's in the right to do miss death on others, cuz D. They raped your sisters and enslaved your brothers. Damn, you can tell from the energy that your enemy. Hi, shut up. Everybody has a good side in the back.